Hey everyone, today we are looking at a data translation platform on AWS, something I find very interesting because I get asked very often, Andreas, can you translate your courses or your YouTube videos also in other languages? So let's check it out. By the way, the original video is linked in the description below if you want to look at it on your own as well. So let's get into it. Hi, I'm Noan from AWS. Hi, I'm Ryan from Mission Cloud, and this is my architecture. Oh, what do we see? Already a lot. Bedrock, 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 Poly, Amazon Augmented AI, Step Functions, Cloud Functions. Okay, okay, okay. Interesting. Ryan, tell us about Mission Cloud and about this architecture that you have developed for one of your customers. So Mission Cloud is a premier AWS partner and all we do is AWS. Uh, we have professional services and this particular project falls under the data analytics and machine learning practice, which I run. And so I'm super excited to talk about our customer uh, Magellan TV and, and their architecture we see here. Can you walk me through the user story here? What is the user's journey uh, through these different AWS components? Absolutely. So Magellan TV is a documentary company that has thousands of hours of documentaries and they work with a lot of different distributors, right? Ah, okay. So specifically for documentaries. And it makes sense to have documentaries actually then translated into different languages, right? So not just English. It makes sense. And so what they're looking to do is take their library and do content localization across the globe. And so what happens is the different distributors need different number of hours of content per month. And what they're trying to do is automate that process so that they can create the content that's needed for the distributors. So what happens is a distributor will tell them, hey, we need X number of hours of content per month, right? So that user is then going to figure out, hey, what content am I going to get ready? And they figure out how many hours, drop that into S3, and that's where the path starts, right? So now you have... So, mm. Unfortunately, they don't really tell us what they're doing, right? They don't tell us, okay, what, what actually is this here? Is this video? Is this audio? Is this text here? So let's see if he explains this. They drop an amount of hour in this, so, okay. Have AWS step functions over here that's going to orchestrate across the rest of the infrastructure as we're going through, moving that data into each piece. Oh, okay. Now that file, okay, 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 one of the okay. first steps is it's... So once something is dropped here, a step function actually starts, and this step function then most likely is then going to orchestrate everything here. So they have, through the step functions, the orchestration. Oh, interesting, okay. Split out into all of the different speakers so that you're looking at, you know, each speaker as a different, uh, you know, just as a different JSON, and that's going to hit translate, and you're going to start the translation. Ah, okay. So each speaker, so you have a video, but that would mean this is a JSON, right? So you have the different speakers here. So this is a JSON format per speaker. So this means here, this is, this is most likely text here. This is JSON. So the actual video to text this is happening before actually the data is coming in here okay 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 and by the way we saw that in another video that i've done on these architecture reviews different uh, you know just as a different json and that's going to hit translate and you're going to start the translation process right i can understand you're using step functions to orchestrate that as you as you talked about uh, i assume you're doing the same thing in the middle of the architecture as well to stitch together the bedrock Let's zoom into the ML pipeline here. How are you using Bedrock to achieve the translations? Yeah, so we take that file and we look at a lot of things, right? We pass it into Bedrock to pull out um, all the idioms, you know, in the English language. Um, and so you've got to do an idiom and slang detection to do basically an English to English translation, right? <laughs> Once you have that English to English translation, you now look at translating it to the other language. Ah, okay. So basically, this, I, I would call this your normalization, right? This is something where this is, let's say textbook English. It's this here. So because if you have slang in this, you can't one-to-one -one translate the slang. 
Okay, okay, okay. And when you look at languages, you've heard people talk, some languages are much longer than others, and so you have to do sentence shortening. Um, that way, we're in the documentary, we wanna make sure that we're going through and, and keeping all of our timing windows, right? So you gotta do a sentence shortening, and then from that step, now you're looking at, okay, what region am I going to? Is there any specifics in that region for grammar or content or anything else that could have sensitivities? So now I'm doing, you know, basically a cultural check at the end with Bedrock as well, so that I can uh, have that final piece. And so that, you know, I've, I've now gone English to English, shortened my sentence and dealt with cultural pieces that could present issues and get that documentary ready. I can see Amazon Poly, Amazon Augmented A2I. How, how are you using these components? Yeah, so from Bedrock, right, we just have essentially the scripts. So now we take those scripts. It's interesting that they, basically this is all here, this, this part here is all polishing, right? polishing the content that comes out of the translate. So one of the big things here is the translate part. And then this idiom sentencing shortening. We do this with ChatGPT as well. Cultural and I don't know what type of things they're doing here. And then, okay. And we use Polly to do text to speech. So now I have the speech files. And from that, I pass it into A2I where my translator can now look at it and do quality checks, right? So at the beginning of the process, that translator is using, uh, you know, this A2I quite a bit as we try to work through any kind of cultural issues. And then once you have that set and you really go into production, you know, you're just kind of doing spot checks here and there uh, on the data to make sure that everything's still performing. So where does the final output land? Okay, well, that's very interesting. They're doing here, this is, I haven't used Polly. So this is text to speech here, this part. So they're coming in with text here. They translate here. They clean this. Then they do a text to speech in languages. They then have augmented AI. So this is for, for then checks. This is basically quality. And then out comes a voice, an audio. And of course, this is also why they do here the sentence shortening, because otherwise you're going to mess up uh, the audio over the video. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. Okay. Ooh, okay. Really go into production. You know, you're just kind of doing spot checks here and there uh, on the data to make sure that everything's still performing. So where does the final output land? Yeah, so then at the end, right, we're gonna drop everything into an S3 bucket. There's the video files, there's the sound files, and then you also have, you know, a translated file in case people wanna use closed captions. Wait a sec, where did... The video files, the audio files are going to land then in S3 again. So where do the video files come from? Here. The audio comes from here. So the video must be also dropped here or they're dropping the video in here and they have the transcribe feature before that in their pipeline. Right? So most likely either there is a spot or they copy the video files in two. Okay, interesting. I, I always have the feeling they leave stuff out, right? In case people want to use closed captions. Got it, got it. Ryan, I can see uh, in the top of the uh, architecture, you put cloud formation as a component. How are you using cloud formation to automate this batch process that you explained? Yeah, absolutely. So it takes about one minute to do the processing for every one minute of the video. And so you can imagine if you have multiple distributors that want you know, a couple of hundred hours of video each, each month that you have to break this out into multiple nodes, right? So we have this pipeline written in CDK, then when it instantiates, it uses CloudFormation to spin this out into a bunch of nodes so that you can then work through all the video you need to do content localization through. I would like to know the actual, like how does the actual infrastructure look for this? He says nodes, so most likely then is that is that EC2 instances? What type of instances is this? Right? Because as I understand, Bedrock and Translate, these are software as a service tools. But like, what do you mean with nodes? One hour takes one hour, that is... Oof. Each month. 
what were the few few things that your customer was excited about this uh, design and architecture? Yeah, some of the exciting pieces of this design, right right now they were kind of working with some third party services. It cost them about $20 a minute to get this done. And then with this, it's about a dollar a minute. So previously, wow. you know, it's cost, you know, close to $5 million to do the library, where now it's much cheaper per language. And so they're looking at, okay, I, I can do more than just one language, right? I can do a lot of different languages because of all the power of the AWS services that they have going on. That's awesome. Cool. Brian, thank you for diving deep into this architecture. I really enjoyed our conversation. Now, also, the thing is, if you translate this into other languages, let's look at this again translate do you always have to go through the whole ah you always have to go through the whole architecture right ah but because like once you are here let's say you do an english to english transcription right you take the data this is your this is raw here this is english translate english to english hmm then you clean it up because that you know the idea that I that I was thinking of is once you have here one transcript or one you have translated once and this is clean you could then make it simpler to always feed this into this right you don't need to split the stuff does this actually save time I don't think that actually saves time no that doesn't really save time forget about it nah. or what do you think does, would this save time if you already have clean English here clean English to Spanish, then you would go with idioms because most likely these are would would then not be here, right? Then you would use sentence shortening, you would do the cultural checks, maybe. Now it could be that if you have it once that it would actually or would save some time. Yeah, very interesting architecture. I hope you had fun. Let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, check out the other architecture reviews that I have done. Give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe and share.